Hello everybody and welcome to how to install mods on Supermarket Simulator in 2025. Actual technique hasn't changed, but people have been getting a little bit confused lately with a few different things changing with the game. So I'm making a fresh video just to make sure people are up to date. I'm also going to be showing you how to edit your save file in this video because that has also changed a little bit and people are again struggling with that. So let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to download Toby's Bepinex pack for Supermarket Simulator. Now this is the same pack that it was before, but it is now just a pure Bepinex pack. It used to be Bepinex and Melanoda pack, and I think that's where some of the confusion recently has come in. I've got a lot of comments of people getting confused by that. It is still the same thing, it just doesn't have Melanoda. Why doesn't it have Melanoda anymore? Most of the mod authors that were still um, developing mods or keeping their mods up to date are all using Bepinex anyway. And the latest game update basically made it impossible to support Melanoda anymore. So the decision was made by the people that have made this mod not to bother with it any further. All that really means is it's actually simpler to put mods in now. You don't need to think, is it a Melanoda? Is it a Bepinex? You don't need to think about that anymore. Everything just goes in Bepinex. It's really, really simple. Uh, if you are new to modding and you are not able to follow this video very easily, if you scroll down on this page, there is a full how to do it. Uh, explanation further down on the page so maybe you can follow this along with what I'm doing as well and get your head around it if you are struggling. Unfortunately if you are a Mac user mods now thing of the past it is not a, a possibility for you you will not be able to use mods uh, on this game unfortunately. If you are using PC Game Pass you can find where you need to go at this uh, folder here this is where you need to go so that's where you need to navigate if you're using PC Game Pass, the technique will be the same. However, Game Pass is pretty limited in the amount of mods that will work. So it is going to be very hit and miss for you. Some mods will work, some won't. Some may just stop working randomly. Some uh, may never work. It is one of those things. It's a bit of a lottery. So unfortunately, if you are on PC Game Pass, you probably won't be able to use all of the mods uh, that you may see other people doing. Like if you watch people on YouTube, you might not be able to use all of the same mods, but you might be able to use a few. If you're playing on console, there is no support whatsoever. So once you're here, what you need to do is you need to click manual. And then you can click download from here. Now you do need to be signed in in order to do this and make an account. But don't worry that it's not a paid account or anything like that. Just chuck an email in there. That's all you need for an account. Then click download and then we'll take it from there. So once you have downloaded the pack, you should get something like this in a zipped folder. Toby's Bepin Expert for Supermarket Simulator in a zip folder. All you need to do is extract it. Now you can use the Windows extractor, works just fine, I found. Um, I personally use WinRAR just because it's easier for me to choose where I want it. So for example, for this video, I just want it to extract here so I can just click it and there it is. It's a bit more simple for that sort of thing. If you go through the Windows one, you have to go through, select a folder of where you want to put it and everything. It's it's just a bit easier for the purposes of the video in particular for me to use that one, but you are fine, I think, to use the Windows one. I've only used it a couple of times, but it's always been fine. Uh, that should give you all of these files. Now, where do these files go? I shall show you that now. So if you go into Steam and you go onto the game page, then all you need to do is click Manage, go down to Manage again, and then you can come to Browse Local Files. If we click that, that will open up the home folder for Supermarket Simulator. So this is where all of the game files are stored. This is where we're going to put the files we've just extracted, okay? So if I go and find those particular ones, which are in this folder for me, uh, if I just copy and paste these, or you can just drag and drop, obviously I don't need the main folder there, so I'm just going to copy and paste those ones. We don't need the, uh, the zip folder. So we'll copy those, and then we'll bring them over here, and then we'll just paste, and they're going to come into the main folder of Supermarket Simulator. Now, what we need to do next is we need to give the game a boot. Okay, so we're going to start the game up. And then once the game is booted up, we're just going to quit straight out again. Now, I will mention, uh, when you first do this, when you first put mods into the game and you first load that pack in, when you open the game, usually nothing will happen. And then that can be the case for a couple of minutes, depending on your machine. It can be two or three minutes before anything happens. Uh, don't worry at that phase, just, just leave it. It might seem like nothing is happening, but it actually is beneath the surface. So just uh, just let it happen. Uh, just wait a couple of minutes. If after three or four minutes, nothing is happening at all, yeah, maybe try it again. But if nothing's happening after a couple of minutes, don't worry, eventually it will boot up. Uh, so just go and make a drink or something and then come back and it should have loaded in by that time. Once it has loaded in though, click quit and come straight back out again. 
So once back out of the game and back into the main game folder, it should look a little bit like this. And if you go into Bepinex, the way to know if you've done this correctly, you should now have an error log and the log output. These wouldn't have been here before. If they have been created, then that means you've done it right. And Bepinex has now successfully loaded into Supermarket Simulator. So now we can get started with getting in some mods. So with the mods, it is important to note that as of the 8th of October, 2025 when the game did its multiplayer update that actually broke all mods every single one of them that was made before that date will not work that is just flat out we will not work uh, so they've all had to be updated since so what you're going to be looking for if you're watching this around the sort of time of october 2025 is you want to go for the last updated mods okay so some of them that we've done months and months ago uh, will not work so you not there's no point even trying them they just will not work go to the last updated tab and you can see what has been updated and try and pick some that have been updated uh, so a few days ago or a few weeks ago as long as they've been updated since the 8th of october update when the game brought in multiplayer as long as they've been updated since then they should work just fine more and more of them are being updated every single day so this is a growing list so if you don't see your favorite mod there yet or if you've seen somebody on youtube playing with a certain mod and you don't see it in there, don't panic, just wait a few more weeks and hopefully it will arrive back again. So we have got a good selection of mods though. Um, there are a lot of start of coming back in. It's not like it's only a handful. There are quite a few coming back in all of the time. I'm going to download this one for the purposes of this video. It's one that I've used quite a few times before and you can see it says update available because I've had it once before. So once you come in here, same thing as we did with the Bepinex, we click manual and Download it. Like so. So once you've downloaded your mod or mods, you should have it wherever you've downloaded them to and they should look like this. So it should have the mod name and it should be in a zip folder. So if we just unzip this, like so, it will give us, in some cases it will just give you the mod, in some cases it will give you the folder. If it gives you the folder, you can just drag this or copy and paste this straight into the main game folder and it will do the rest of the work for you. If it doesn't, and I'm going to show you if it doesn't because that's more handy for you, I think. Uh, if you just go into it, you will find the .dll file. So if it's just giving you a .dll file, this is what you do. So if you copy it and then go and find your main game folder again. So here we are back at the main game folder. If we go into Bepinex, if we go into plugins, we can just paste it in here and that is it. That's entirely all you need to do. Now, some mods require you to boot the game and quit back out and then go straight back into the game again. So if you find yourself, like if you've gone into the game and there's nothing working, it's probably because the game needed a boot. So if you just quit out and go back in again, it should be working fine. That's often common if uh, mods that offer a config file, which means you can configure the mod to suit your needs. They often need a boot first. So then the config file would arrive in here. I might download a mod in a moment to show you a config file, just so you're up to speed with that. But let's have a look at the game to see if our mod is working. So the mod I downloaded was the More Computer Inventory mod. So if I head over to my computer, we can see if the mod is working. So let's head over here to my computer. So if I go into my market here, I can see if my mod is working and it is. As you can see, I have uh, extra information here that you don't get in the base game. In the base game, it just tells you how many you've got and how many you get in a box, basically. But that, this mod breaks it down for you. So I know how many are on my shelves. I know how many are in my storage. And uh, I can also sort by some different parameters here as well. So I like to keep it, for example, on storage quantity. So I always know what's in my storerooms. And if I think if you keep your storeroom well stocked, you also then keep your shelving well stocked. It's also color coded. So if it's purple, for example, or pink, it's actually got too much of it in stock. If it's yellow, you might want to think about ordering it. If it goes orange, probably time to order. If it's red, you've run out, you definitely need to order. So it's a very handy way of keeping on top of your stock with that particular mod, but the mod is indeed working. So that's how we do the mods. So let's come back out of the game because I'm going to show you the config file now. So here we are back in the main game folder. So if we go into Bepinex, we can actually see here we've got the config. So the plugin is where we placed our mod. If we go into the config, we have actually got ourselves a config file for the mod I've just installed. So if I open this, this will be different for different mods. Basically, most mods, or if not all mods, will come out of the box working perfectly as most people are going to want to use them. But for some people, you may want to refine it slightly. So for example, with this particular mod, 
uh, let's say I don't like the fact that my inventory updates itself every single second. Let's say for some reason I want that to be 30 seconds. Well, then all I would have to do is change 30 seconds here. So the refresh rate limit, if we change that to say 30, I would then click save. And then that would, instead of doing it every single second, would now do it every 30 seconds. So there are a few mods that utilize this sort of thing. Uh, I used a self-checkout mod that sped the uh, people up at the self-checkout, the speed they take. So you, they, at the moment they were taking sort of one and a half seconds, you could make them take less than that. So if you wanted to really speed them up, they could go at say 0.9 seconds and they would really whiz through a self-checkout. It's basically just for refining mods for your own personal use. So if you're brand new to modding, have a go at this. If you go wrong, just delete the mod and try again. Um, but yeah, if you're new to modding, take it easy, but it's reasonably easy to understand. And most mod authors will tell you exactly what to do. So set the minimum time in seconds before refreshing the inventory. They tell you what the default was. Uh, so that's what it used to be. So if you, if you go wrong, set it back to the default value, what the acceptable range is for the mod to still work. And then you can set your own values. And that is basically how you work a config file. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to edit your save file. So if you're not familiar with this, if you go into your Windows drive, if you go into users, if you go into yourself, if you go into app data, this may be a hidden folder. So you'll have to uh, show hidden folders to be able to see this. But if you go into app data, if you go into local low, Nocta Games is what we're looking for. So we'll click on that. And then we go into Supermarket Simulator. This is where you find your save file. So just a note on this method, this is obviously through Steam and Windows. If you are doing this through Mac, uh, there is a, a separate way of finding it. I will leave in the description where to find your save file, but I have no way of testing to see if it actually works or not. So that's going to have to be on you, unfortunately. If you're playing on PC Game Pass, I'll also leave a link where to find your save file. You can edit it the same way. I have tried it a little bit myself, but I'm not actually currently playing the game on PC Game Pass. So I don't know if it works and I have heard that it's crashing games if you do try it. So again, that one may not work either. Uh, and obviously console, I don't think you'd be able to do this either. So this is just for players on Steam. Now, before all you had to do is, for example, I have an older one in here. All you had to do is edit your save file that kind of looked like that. It had the date of when it was made, edit that and it would work just fine. Just recently, that has changed because the game has implemented its own multi-save system. So it has now slot 0, 1, and 2, I'm guessing. Um, so it's changed in that regard. So you now need to edit your slot 0. Now, if you edit your slot 0, and this is what people have been struggling with. So if I change this, we've already got a pretty random number in here. But if we change this to 150,000... Uh, and then hit save, that's going to change my money to 150,000. If I want to do store level, so we'll just come into here, type level in, uh, you can change the level of various different things. So if you just come down, eventually it will find it. Control F to do that, by the way, it will find it. So let's change our store level to 90 as well. We can also change other things here as well. All of these numbers can be changed. All you have to do is hit save at the end, and that will save it for you. However, if you just now go back into the game, it will not work. It will load in, uh, it will actually, it will say a corrupted save and it will not work. What you need to do is remove this one here, the slot, which I think this stands for backup or something along those lines. But what you have to do is remove that. So the slot 0BK, which is the sort of save that goes along with it, you have to delete that. So if you get rid of that, and before you do this, by the way, back up your save, grab these two, go and put them in a separate folder somewhere, so if you go wrong, at least you can drag and drop them back over and everything will be fine. But what you need to do now is delete that. And then when we boot our game up, we should have 150,000 and be level 90. And here we are back in the game then with $150,000 and store level 90. Now, remember, always back up your save before doing anything to them, just in case you go wrong. It's always good to make sure you back them up in a different folder somewhere. So if you do make a mistake, you can always start again. No problem. Takes a lot of the risk out of it. So make sure you always back up your save, but it is as easy as that. Just remember to always get rid of the BK save. So if you've changed slot zero, whether you've changed slot one, two, or whatever slot you've changed, make sure you get rid of the BK file that's also associated with it, and then it will load in just fine. So that is the end of the video. So hopefully now you are up to scratch and able to mod the game. You're able to change your save files and all will be working. So if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you leave it a like, consider subscribing to and joining the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you for another video very soon.